I'm Keith Hilson with the Schmidt Music Trombone Shop back with another instrument review for you. And today I have one of the perennial favorites in the large bore tenor trombone world, specifically the Getson 4147 IB Ian Bousfield artist model large bore tenor. This instrument since its inception really over a decade ago has been one of the real go-tos in the community and in my opinion, has always been one of those instruments that outplays its price. It's a fantastic playing instrument. Um, it's sometimes they're hard to get a hold of because Getson's production tends to be, you know, a little bit pushed back because they are so popular and because they are built in such small quantities, it can take a little bit to get in. But we've got our latest version in, and this is actually the brand new 2022 model that has some of the little tweaks that Christian Griego has recently been working on. Um, so I'm really excited to play this recent iteration for you and talk about the experience. So I'll play about it. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to be playing all of this today on my trusty Bach 5G. <laughs> So, like I mentioned, the 4147 IB Ian Bousfield has been one of the go-tos in the professional, even more custom level, large bore tenor trombones for well over a decade now. Um, they've been, in my opinion, one of the most versatile large bore tenors out there, which again, really encapsulate what it was designed to do with the great Ian Bousfield. So we know Ian Bousfield um, is equally at home in solo settings, you know, being an unbelievable, you know, soloist with his technique and his color and the timbre demands that he has, but at the same time with his orchestra playing, needing an instrument that allows him to have the breadth of sound, the control, the stability, the projection that you need to have as an orchestra player. This model has done such a great job of balancing all of that. And of course it's in encapsulated, you know, some of the innovations that Getson and Edwards have developed over the years. So the uh, this new version has a lot of the same features as the previous generation of the 4147 IB. So it still is an eight and a half inch gold brass belt, which again, in itself is unique for Getson. They are very much in the yellow brass, 
red brass realm, but specifically for the Bossfield model, they went with gold brass, um, unsoldered rim, uh, gold brass main tuning slide here, both the main and the F side tuning slides are reversed, which of course we know changes that airflow, that resistance feel a little bit. Um, yellow brass outer tubes, nickel silver crook, um, Standard rotor. Now they've had a few different iterations of the rotor. At one time they were using the power bore rotor. They have a little bit different rotor, which we'll talk about in just a second here. And um, of course, this model was the first Getson model to use the Edwards concept of the harmonic pillar. So just as a quick reminder, if you're not familiar with this concept, the harmonic pillars are little um, pillars of different materials. Um, you're looking at either like steel or copper. Um, they describe them as hard or soft. And the idea here is having just this little pillar, which the weight is, you know, infinitesimal. I mean, there's really not a whole lot to it. But if you put that weight in the right resonance points, it can change how the instrument rings, which is going to affect timbre, response, centering, slotting, flexibility, all of these different ideas. Now, of course, this is an idea that uh, Edwards has been using for quite a number of years with their harmonic bridge system up here, uh, where they have multiple spots to put these pillars, different weight different locations, um, but on the 4147, we put one of them right on the main bell brace here. And again, it, it surprised me how much, the first time I played this model way back when, how much of a difference these little pillars made. Um, whether you have it in or not, if you put it in on the front side, do you put it in on the back side, all of it are subtle ways to change how the instrument plays. So all of these innovations have been a part of this model for a long time, but with the new iteration here, uh, Christian Grego has made some changes. Um, specifically, um, you know, we've had a little communication back and forth. Um, they made some changes. They can talk about some changes. They can't talk about as much proprietary things. But um, what they can talk about are things like, for example, the uh, outer hand slide brace here. This was uh, one of the really unique ideas with the original 4147 that this brace has always been sterling silver. Um, but um, what they had done, they changed the positioning of that just a little bit um, to, and what they found is it really helped with the resonance of the instrument, helped things to really lock in place with that particular positioning. But they have also made some changes with the rotor. They have a new, more open rotor design. And what they found is that, you know, by keeping the sterling silver brace here, but shifting the position back a little bit to a quote unquote more normal position, um, that helped to rebalance that. Um, the, the more open feel of the rotor. So it had subtle change there. Um, they've made changes to the inner hand slide, and that's one of those things they can't really talk about. Um, but they've made some changes to how, I imagine, how they're shaping, maybe even how they're forming the inner hand slide tubes. Um, and um, one of the new innovations with this particular model, it now has a removable lead pipe. Previously, um, it had had a fixed lead pipe um, that, you know, of course, a you know artist designed lead pipe that they designed with Ian Bosfield, but this is now removable and is threaded for the Getson Custom and Edwards lead pipes to give the player even a little bit more flexibility. Now, all of these changes together, what does that mean for the player? This is, while it has so many of the characteristics of the original Bosfield model, there are some differences. I find it to be a bit bigger playing. It has a little bit more weight to the core of the sound. It had, it, you can definitely feel that the rotor is a little bit more open um, and it gives the, the overall feel and presence a little bit different place in there. Um, it definitely feels like I can open up into it a little bit more on you know, some of our higher dynamic playing. Um, there, it still retains it. Frankly, I think it might even be a little bit more flexible. There is just a, a silky smoothness to moving between the partials and the, the boss field always did a great job of this, but I feel like there is just a little bit different connection. And I think because of this openness and broadness, um, I did have to change a little bit from my usual boss field setup. Um, in the previous iterations, I'd always been a fan of this model with the softer of the harmonic pillars. Um, I thought it gave it just a little bit more warmth to the sound, helped to give it a little more softness. Um, but with this, because again, it is a bigger playing horn, um, you know, I found that putting in the harder pillar did help to actually focus. I felt like I had a little bit better articulation, um, a little bit more clarity around the outside of the sound. Um, so again, I found, you know, again, from the previous iteration, I had to change a little bit how I played it, which tells me they've obviously made some changes. I, I really like it. Again, I think it is taking the design 
and updating it a little bit. We're seeing more of this in trombone development where we're looking for a real balance um, of you know instruments we want we want instruments that maybe a little bit more open play but have a super a certain amount of weight to the sound but we still want them to be responsive and we want them to be uh, versatile we want them to have some efficiency to it and I think the all of the innovations that Christian Grego and the Getz and team have made with this have really brought this instrument to that next level. It's still giving you that color and flexibility in timbre and you know, response through the ranges, but just giving it a little more presence. And frankly, again, I think a little bit more versatility. I can see this design fitting into a little bit more of an American orchestral setting. Um, the previous model uh, was really, really great. And I think with, with certain, you know, maybe more chamber orchestral settings or more of a European approach, I thought it really fit well here. I can see, you know, blending a little bit more of the European and American orchestral mentalities here with this model. Um, so as always, it's just great to see all of the fantastic work that they're doing. And of course, all of the building, the quality and everything is absolutely top notch. The slide was a 10 and a half out of 10 right out of the box. It has all of the great stuff that gets in doing with some of the new innovations. And that's why it's so great why we have people like Christian Grieg out there who is are always thinking about what's next. How do we improve? This is one example of all of that great work. So I hope you enjoyed this review. If you have any comments, questions about what you heard, what I talked about, maybe you have previous uh, uh, experience with the older model, or maybe you've already had a chance to experience the new model, please share those experiences with our comments, with our community here. We'd love to have you as a part of that. If you like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, think about subscribing to our channel. And of course, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. So as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>